We have the lovely Annie McCary here with us. Well, thank you for joining me today. Nice to see you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's been a while since I've been in the studio. I know. Well, we just started having people back on uh, not too long ago, so we're happy that you could be with us. And I know you just had a third board meeting, and uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that. And I know that the whole voting thing was, was a big deal. Yes, yes. We had just had our monthly board meeting uh, on Tuesday of right, this week. Right, right. And we had a lot of discussion about a lot of things, but what I wanted to speak about today was um, an issue that's been forefront on everybody's mind for, for many, many, many months, and yeah. it's pretty much coming to a close right now. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I know that there was the insurance ballot, which yes. you voted on, and, and now you have, uh, have had results. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, thank you for asking. Um, the insurance ballot did initiative did fail, mm -hmm. um, and we believe that part of that failure had a lot to do with voter apathy. Uh, voters just didn't have the interest or concern in the initiative, so mm. um, the voter turnout was very low. Actually, 51.36 percent of members voted, mm -hmm. which is actually 11 percent less than the 2020 CCNR restatement campaign. Huh. Yeah. That seems odd. Yeah. It, yeah that, you know, what I was going to ask is, you have 51.36% of the membership voted. Is that the majority of the people who physically live here? No, th these are just the majority, because everybody that physically lives here, and some of the members live out of state, so right. out of state uh, members were also mailed ballots. Oh, so they did that too. Okay, great. We did great. that as well. And we also called a lot of the people from out of state. Okay. I'm making sure that they did get their ballot and right. uh, that they understood what the ballot initiative was. Right, right. Now, now you say 51% membership voted, but of that 51%, 46.76% voted yes. Voted yes, which is a very low number. Which you yeah. needed what to actually pass? Yeah. In order for an amendment to the CCNRs to actually pass, we need 67% of the members to vote in favor of the initiative. Oh, wow, I see, I see. Wow, well that's tough. So what does that mean now? What that means now is that monthly assessments are gonna go up. They're gonna increase by $93 per manor per month, right. beginning in January 2022. Wow, okay, yeah. okay. And, you know, I mean, that's a big chunk. It, it, it is a big chunk, um, and it's a 20% increase is the maximum allowed by, by the law in any give, given year that we can raise the assessment. So. Okay, okay. And then uh, you, it says here, thirds increase does not include any assessment GRF might impose. Absolutely. So there may be some additional uh, increases based on what GRF decides to increase thirds assessment by. So oh. there could be, there will be some additional increases in addition to the $93 per oh, man wow. per month. Okay. What is it currently? Six was the current assessment. Yeah, yeah. I believe it's six seventy two. Six hundred and seventy two dollars. Oh a okay. Month. So now they're now they're looking at higher than over seven hundred. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then Another thing that, you know, the insurance cost here, we were talking about, um, it doesn't cover certain insurances, right? The 93? Um, it, it, it does not cover all the insurance costs. Um, okay. Last year, the board borrowed from the disaster fund to underwrite last year's cost, and we have to pay that money back. Oh, wow. All right. Mm -hmm. So what happens now going forward? What, where will you get some of the monies and things like that? Well, uh, let me just tell you a couple of other things. Um, the insurance costs are expected to increase again next year, along with materials, labor, and electricity, and water. So mm. everything, not just in Laguna Woods, but throughout the country, right. costs are going up. Right. Another concern for Laguna Woods is the fire season is already upon us. Right. And um, Orange County Fire Authority quickly extinguished a, a fire that we had just recently near the 73 toll road. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I know the fire season, I had a, a long conversation with fire authority, um, one of their PIOs, and he was saying that everything is so dry. And then we also talked to the water department, and they were like, well, we're going to you know, have some trouble if we don't get any rain, and everything is super dry in Arizona. We've yes. heard about Lake Mead, so you're right. There's a whole lot of different things going on that are going to affect yes. us. <laughs> then also, the other thing was that you've had, uh, you know, you've talked a lot about insurance, uh, you have a new assessment 
of the entire area, and it was it's way more than you guys thought it would be. Yes, absolutely, the value of the property. Mm -hmm. So Thirst Value is $1.6 billion, and that's right. also like, likely to increase over the next few years, mm -hmm. further impacting insurance uh, costs, because as insurance costs go up, the likelihood that assessments will increase as well. Yeah, so. wow. Okay, well then what has to happen going forward, you know, in preparing your next budget? Okay, in, in preparing for the 2022 budget, the board is curtailing or some, some activities or even uh, projects are being canceled mm. uh, for, for the savings. These um, projects that are being curtailed or canceled will not impact mutual infrastructure and it does not include staff layoff. Okay. It will include some, some of the projects that are being curtailed are fumigation, dry rot, wasteline remediation, um, additional staff for VMS activities and vehicle purchases, stuff that um, supports normal day-to-day -day operations. Oh, okay, so people should be prepared for that. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we, we are doing as much as we can to be transparent with the information to make sure that we're communicating to the residents as often as we possibly can, letting them know what is going on. So okay. um, we are doing our very best to communicate what's going on. Is there any anything else uh, in regards to you know communication? I know it's been it's been tough for all people, obviously, because we haven't been able to meet in person. We've tried the Zooms, and people can follow along uh, on Village Television as well as uh, virtually too on some of the meetings. Exactly, and now that we're meeting, we're starting meeting in the boardroom, that's uh, another opportunity for members to actually come to the board meetings and see the board of directors in person, hear the information right there. Sometimes it's a little difficult on, on the Zoom because of sound quality, sure. and sometimes people just can't connect very well virtually. So, okay. so we're really happy to be back in the boardroom, having meetings in the boardroom. Now, are people able to still come to the uh, boardroom and ask questions? Absolutely, oh, okay. absolutely. We every all of our meetings have a mem open forum where members can come and and comment on items either on the agenda or not on the agenda. That is excellent. Well, thank you so much. Nice to see you in person. Thank you. All right. All right, stick around because as I mentioned, we were talking about water. We now have the El Toro Water District coming up, so stay tuned.